In this video, we want to keep working with uh, our code to build up so that we can look at some join operations on Spark. In order to do this, we're pulling in some new data. I decided to pull in a, an additional data set from the BLS, and that is the series data down here. Uh, the series data has series IDs, which are actually the complete values that we see in the data here. So the series ID actually indexes, kind of matches with that. The area is a substring of here. So for example with this, the ST27 to there, that is in the area file under um, which under Minnesota here. Okay, so there's this is kind of a substring of it. I want to use this file as well, and this way we can actually do kind of multiple levels of joins if we want to. So we had loaded in the area. I'm going to go ahead and make another case class for the series. As with the area, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that we don't necessarily need. Um, you know, for our purposes, I don't care about the beginning and end parts of the period. I don't need the footnotes. Uh, I would like to have the series ID. I might actually bring in the area code just because that way I don't have to take substrings when I want to uh, join it with the area. And then I want the series title. So. I want the ID, which is a string. I want the area, which is a string. And I want the title, which is a string. When we read this in, well, the code for this type of reading always looks about the same. Instead of areas, this will be series. We're going to load in la.series. I want to filter off the header line. So there's an area code that's on that line. And split on tabs, because once again, this is a tab separated file that just happens to have some spaces on it, so splitting on tabs and trimming will be useful here. I want to keep sub 0, sub 2 for the first two elements. So P sub 0 and P sub 2. And then the last one, instead of 2, we're going to skip 3, 4, 5, and take P sub 6. Okay, there we go. I um, guess we could actually keep the measure code. Let's go ahead and let's do that. It is a two character value that's in there, which I believe was right, it's right after this, so P sub 3. And this is not area. This is series. Okay, last thing we need to do is load in the actual data. And I guess I should put in a print that prints out the series. And we want I'll go ahead with just data. Actually, you know what? Each of these would potentially be used a lot. So I'd want to cache each one of them. OK, this data set has a slightly longer name. It's la data dot 
So I'm loading in the Minnesota data. I need to get rid of the top line. Uh, let's get rid of the string year. Okay. And then for each one of these, I am going to split them on tabs and trim them because they still have that interesting behavior. This case class, though, actually has some ints inside of it. So the ID string we just take as the first value. And let's come here and call this LA data. But the other three are two ints and a double. Okay, so we took the first one. The second one converts very nicely directly to an int, and that is at p sub 1. The third one we'd like to convert directly to an int, but it has this m prefix on it. So I am going to take p sub 2, I'm going to drop the first character from it, and convert that to an int. And then our value here at the end can just be converted to a double. <clears throat> and we should run this to make sure that it gets all three data series. Doesn't throw any exceptions because if we me mess something up in our parsing, we could get some exceptions in here. <laughs> okay, unfortunately I printed the series again and not the data. And as you probably recall, unless I actually call the take here, which is an action, this does not necessarily uh, get processed, though my caching might be processing it for me. This is the one we have to worry the most about exceptions on, because it is all the others are just using strings. Yep, as I said, this is where we have to worry about caching or about, about the exceptions. That was interesting. Okay, so one thing to note is that when you get these exceptions, they print quite a bit. But number format exception for M01. P sub 2 dot drop 1. The drop should be dropping off that M. There isn't, I can't keep a leading space because I trimmed them. Zero, one, two. But it definitely has a problem with that in our code line 31. I mean, I could drop everything that's not a digit, or filter it. Only keep things that is digit. <clears throat> it is more robust, but Clearly, I am doing something fundamentally wrong on this, on the input string M01. P sub 0, P sub 1, P sub 2. Oh, wait, nope. Okay. This is a. Let's go back to that drop one. Because reading the stack trace closely gives us information about what's going on here. It's a number format exception, and it's M01. So it's very easy to immediately think, oh, it's this called to int. And indeed, we don't get much information from the line number because it happens on that line. Everything happens on that line, though. However, if you look, this is calling to double. So it's actually the P sub 2 why well, left a 2 instead of a 3. Let's run that. It does help to look at your stack traces and to make sure that you know how to read stack traces to get the information out of them.
the last data file is the biggest one, so it takes a little while longer. And there we go. Okay, that looks like it is the correct information. So now we're reading in all three of our data sets, and we can come back and decide what it is that we want to calculate with this data, and then see how joins can help us do that.